All right, before we can get started, um, actually starting to rip the uh, material, uh, I want to adjust my guide here in terms of my rip fence. And one of the things I need to do is make sure that my spacer here or my edge is actually aligned with the very front edge of the teeth. Uh, so I'll do a kind of a, 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 a double check view from the other side, and then I'm just going to snug that up. But as long as I've got that with the front end of the teeth, what has worked for me is it allows me that if I'm accidentally pivoting a little bit, it doesn't make that much of a difference because that is always going to be a true distance from the front of the teeth that are cutting to the actual fence. Um, you'll work on trying to do your visual back and through here as you're uh, lining things up with the cut. But that's kind of how I work on setting things up, and it works for me. You may find that you do something slightly different, but your edge, <clears throat> uh, in order to have a starting place, uh, just set it up with the front part of your teeth uh, of your cut. And you may have to adjust that for different uh, size blades that you're working with. All right, so I've got that pretty much adjusted where I want, and I would say that the actual edge is probably at the very back end of the uh, teeth uh, as I've set that up. You'll notice that, unfortunately, I am running a quarter-inch um, hook in terms of the teeth uh, setup. I would much rather run a three-quarter inch blade or one of my uh, resaw blades. However, um, that is hooked into a dust collection system and this particular bandsaw is not. So this gives me the mobility, especially because I'm running 12-foot boards from one side of the barn to the other side of the barn. Uh, and so I, it is a bit of a dusty mess uh, and this uh, machine is not set up for a larger blade capacity. Um, plus, I don't have the 93 inch uh, that is used on this standard Delta versus my resaw, which is at 104 inches with this height extension. So sometimes when you're out of blades, uh, you're not always able to use what you want. But this is doing a great job, even though uh, I bumped the tension up just a little bit higher uh, on the blade. And so it has been tracking pretty straight. So let's go ahead and set up and cut some of these uh, strips for the canoe. All right, so you'll notice that I'll cut two strips at a time. That way I can keep them uh, layered in terms of their direction because you always want to keep track of your wood grain, especially as you're cutting things off, uh, rather than flipping things and getting it maybe uh, 180 degrees off. Anyways, I'll even mark these uh, like a 1A, 1B, uh, so that I know kind of what board it came off of or however I want to designate. Now what's kind of cool is this is some very, very blue um, beetle kill pine. So very excited to see how this is going to integrate on the sides of the, uh, uh, the wee lassie, the little mini canoe, the double paddle canoe that we're working on. So that's kind of the, the, the process that we go through. And again, um, a lot of people will have different ways of holding or they'll put up guides. Uh, I try and make sure that I have fingers both on the front and the back side of the blade. Uh, and as I get closer and closer, I'm just going to have to make sure that I watch my fingers and keep them out of the way. Um, and then uh, as we get closer, we'll start using push sticks and other things in order to make sure that we're not getting too close to the blade. So that was just a little bit of the process. I'm going to go ahead and continue uh, ripping this down. And then the next process will be uh, actually doing the beaten cove so that we're able to lay these up on the canoe. Now, before uh, we get to cutting, one of the tricks that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my boards here and I've lined them up all on the end and I'm gonna take my Sharpie and I'm gonna do a diagonal line. Reason being is if they get out of order, I can come back, put them in the exact order for the way I take them off the stack. That way I can kind of just keep track of which ones are which because I do wanna use one on one side, one on the other so that it's kind of a mere uh, look as we go through. So those will be some of the tricks in terms of marking your boards. Uh, I'll do the same thing on this stack here, line everything up, draw a diagonal line, and then I'll be able to keep track of my order.